Hello everyone, I hope you are right. This is Mr. Weiner again. The last time we talked about, we talked about grammar. We talked about conditional one. And I hope uh, you do well with it. Today we start a new unit, unit nine. I teach you about teenagers in different countries and the rules they have in those countries. Hello, uh, Mr. Weiner, is you here? Letztes Mal haben wir über Grammatik gesprochen, wiederholt über die Conditional One. Heute fangen wir eine neue Unit an, die Unit 9 in eurem Buch. Da geht es um Teenager in anderen Ländern und die Regeln, die diese befolgen müssen. Okay. So today you need your student's book, page 92. Unit 9, it's called Young People Today. Again, we're talking about teenagers in different countries and what they are allowed to do or not allowed to do. Okay, to be allowed to. Etwas dürfen. Oftentimes you have rules for things you are not allowed to do. For example, at, at the moment we are not allowed to go outside if it's not necessary. Also normalerweise gibt es Dinge, die du ähm, nicht tun darfst. Zum, zum Beispiel gerade im Moment, wenn es nicht nötig ist, darfst du nicht rausgehen. Yeah? So, um, on the left hand side you see how you say things are not allowed. I am not allowed to drink. Du könntest das wortwörtlich übersetzen. Mit mir ist es nicht erlaubt zu trinken. Umgangssprachlich sagen wir aber einfach, ich darf nicht trinken. Ja? Aber wenn du es in Englisch sagen möchtest, musst du die Form von allowed zu verwenden. I am not allowed to drink. Ich darf nicht trinken. He is not allowed to drive. Er darf nicht fahren. Im Gegensatz dazu, Dinge, die du tun darfst, I am allowed to drink. Ich darf trinken. He is allowed to drive. Er darf fahren. Okay, back to a student's book. Uh, I want you to open your student's book on page 92 and take a look at the picture here. So it's about a girl. The text is called Meet Milase. Um, can you guess where this girl is coming from? Maybe you know this uh, flag here. Yeah, if you guess Africa, you're on the right uh, way. It's actually South Africa. This is the flag of South Africa. And this is a girl which goes to school in South Africa. Before you read the text now, I want you to uh, take a look at this graphic story here. It's about this girl and just lean back and listen to it. Meet Melasse. Hi, I'm Melasse. I live near Cape Town in South Africa. So this girl uh, lives near Cape Town. Also sie lebt nicht in Kapstadt selbst, sondern in the near from Kapstadt. This is my father. He's a waiter. He works in a hotel. So her father is a waiter in a hotel. This is my mother. She's a housewife. You can see now the mother and you can guess uh, maybe this would be her uh, siblings. Also wahrscheinlich könnten das dann auch ihre Geschwister sein. I have three brothers. They are six, eight and eleven. Yes, these are the siblings of her. So uh, three brothers. 
We live in a small house, and we have a small garden too. We aren't allowed to play in the garden. Mum's growing vegetables there. So they don't live in a flat. They live in a house. A flat is a Wohnung. Dort leben sie aber nicht. Sie leben in einem Haus. They, sie haben auch einen kleinen Garten. They have a small garden. But they are not allowed to play in the garden. Because mom, mom is growing vegetables there. On Saturdays and Sundays, I go to the youth club with my friends. But I'm not allowed to go out when it's dark. My parents say it's dangerous. So, on the weekend, she goes to the youth club with her friends. Um, but she isn't allowed to go out when it's dark because it's dangerous. Ich pausiere das Video jetzt und lese dir nochmal ganz für dich allein in aller Ruhe durch. Now I want you to read along as you listen to the speaker. Unit 9, Exercise 2A. Listen to the interview. Meet Malasse. Malasse, you live in South Africa. What languages do you speak there? At home, we speak Zulu, but at school, we speak English most of the time because all our subjects are in English. So, Milazi speaks two languages. Do you know which they are? Yes, she speaks Zulu, it's an African language, and English. What language does she speak in school? Yes, she speaks English most of the time because her subjects are in English. When my parents were children, they weren't allowed to speak Zulu at school. That was in the time of apartheid. Yeah, I see. That was terrible, wasn't it? So, when her parents were children, what weren't they allowed to do? So they weren't allowed to speak Zulu, their African language. That's cool. This was in the time of apartheid. Apartheid was a time from 1948 to 1994, where people of color weren't allowed to mix with, with white people, with Europeans. So they weren't allowed to see each other. They weren't allowed to marry each other if you love them they, married, they weren't allowed to use the same toilets the same buses also die apartheid war eine zeit zwischen 1948 und 1994 ähm, wo es menschen in südafrika nicht erlaubt war sich untereinander zu mischen sozusagen ja also sie dürften nicht miteinander heiraten sie dürften nicht gemeinsame Verkehrsmittel, Busse nehmen, sie durften nicht in, manchmal wurden sogar, ähm, gab es verschiedene Gebäude, die sie nicht betreten durften. Ja? Also sie mussten unterschiedliche Schulen verwenden, unterschiedliche Krankenhäuser. And in 1994, Nelson Mandela um, became president and he ended apartheid. He was a very famous person. Uh, who spent 27 years in prison because he was so much against apartheid. He protested against it and she put him into prison for a long time. Also Nelson Mandela um, wurde 1994 Präsident und hat dann endlich nach vielen, vielen Jahren die Apartheid abgeschafft. Um, er hat aber auch sehr viel dafür bezahlen müssen. Er hat über, über 20 Jahre im Gefängnis verbracht, 27 Jahre, glaube ich, waren es. Und äh, aus dem Grund, weil er protestiert hat gegen diese Apartheid. Ja. Okay, let's move on. Und Ted, can you tell me a little about your family? Well, my father's a waiter in a hotel and my mother's a housewife. I have three brothers who are six, eight and eleven. Do you live in a flat or a house? 
We live in a small house. We have a small garden too. So, can you tell me something about her family? How many siblings does she have? Where do they live? And what do her parents do? Okay, so her mother, what, what does she work? She works as a housewife and her father is a waiter in a hotel. They don't live in a flat, they live in a house with a small garden and they grow vegetables there. Also das Mädchen hat drei Geschwister, drei Brüder. Sie wohnen ähm, gemeinsam in einem kleinen Haus mit einem kleinen Garten. Und ihr Vater ist ein Kellner in einem Hotel und die Mutter ist Hausfrau. Sie arbeitet zu Hause. We aren't allowed to play in the garden. My mum's growing vegetables there. And where do you and your friends hang out? There isn't much to do here, but there's a youth club next to the church. That's where I go on Saturdays and Sundays, but I'm not allowed to go out when it's dark. My parents say it's too dangerous. Thank you for the interview, Milase. Okay, so can you name me two things Milase is not allowed to do? What is what is she not allowed to do in the garden? Yes, she's not allowed to play in the garden because her mom's growing vegetables there. And what is what else is she not allowed to do? At night? She's not allowed to go out at night when it's dark because the parents they tell her it's very dangerous. Sie darf also nicht in der Nacht nach draußen gehen, weil es äh, gefährlich ist. Und sie darf nicht im Garten spielen, weil die Mama dort Gemüse anpflanzt. Okay. So, cover, try to cover the, the upper part here. Lege irgendwas drauf, verdeckt den Text da oben und versuche jetzt in aller Ruhe diese Fragen hier zu beantworten. Also nimm dir dein Buch her, uh, nimm einen Bleistift, take a pencil and uh, write your answers into those lines. Nimm deinen Bleistift und schreib deine Antworten hier rein. In einer Minute werden wir dann vergleichen. Okay. I show you the results now. Melasi is from South Africa. She speaks Zulu and English. Melasi's mother works as a housewife. Her family lives in a small house. Melasi goes to a youth club on Saturdays and Sundays. And Melasi is not allowed to go out when it's dark. So what I want you to do as your next homework, you have time until Wednesday. Uh, again, you have links in the description of the video and here in your uh, exercise uh, list. Also du hast wieder zwei Aufgaben, die zwei Links, die du auch hier findest in der Videobeschreibung beziehungsweise bei der Aufgabenliste im EduSchool. Okay, this is your first exercise. Uh, you have to find the words which are missing here uh, in those sentences. Uh, let's make the first one together. Milase lives in... So do you know where she lives? She lives in South Africa, yes. I actually um, only use the word Africa here. So you have to find the words and just mark it and it will go automatically automatically here um, green if it's correct. The words can be horizontal or vertical. You don't have to look for words 
diagonal. And the second part of your homework, and this would be your second exercise. It's also from the text we just read together. You have to find two, you have to match two parts that go together. For example, her parents weren't, what were they? They weren't allowed to speak Sulu at school. So you have to match them and they glue together. And you do this for each, for every one of them. And then it's very important you have to check it. As to to fix it to another, the two samengehörenden Texte, the samengehörenden Blasen. And ganz wichtig ist, dass du am Schluss dann hier diesen Check Button drückst. Dann siehst du, ob es richtig war. Und ich sehe automatisch, ob du die Hausübung auch richtig gemacht hast. Und ich tue mir wesentlich besser beim Verbessern. Okay, so you can match them like this. And if you think it's wrong, just click here again and it goes apart again. Drag them around just as you wish. So before you leave, I just want to show you one last thing. We talked about um, teenagers, a teenager, Milase, who goes to school in South Africa. And I found uh, an interesting uh, YouTube video about another children in South Africa who also live near Kapstadt, uh, Cape Town, uh, but have a very different life. Ratika Tagordian counsels troubled kids at the school. She's also lost her uncle and a cousin to gang violence. How often are the shootings happening? Shootings is now occurring daily. Daily? It's a daily thing. In the morning, in the afternoon, at night. And every pop sounds like a war. The school is basically under siege, isn't it? So it's actually sad, it's sickening. Outside, she shows me bullet holes from a recent shootout and says they've trained the kids to dive on the floor when they hear gunfire. They started shooting, it was this gang just across the road that shot over the field. And then that gang retaliated and the shots came. The bullet actually went over my head because I was standing just here. Wow. Hey yo, we've got company. <laughs> How are you doing? You're right. You good? You're looking very fresh. Eleven-year-old Marizan is one of the pupils Ratika counsels, and she's really worried about his recent behaviour. <laughs> What's he like? I like that Marizan you saw now. Yeah. We always tell him, be that Marazan. Don't be the angry Marazan. Don't be the arrogant Marazan. Mm. Look where it is. I find him inside, heading to class. What's this? A cultural image of South Africa, the Indian people. Is that your book? She's worried he'll end up in one of the gangs. She says he's super bright, but his behavior is holding him back. It's hard to imagine growing up normal here. This gun battle was just a few streets from Marazan's home, witnessed by another young kid. I know that man. Mommy, I know that man. Nearly two and a half thousand have been murdered across the city so far this year. It's one of the deadliest periods on record. A lot of people here say most of the time the police don't even respond. <laughs> Die Polizei weiß gar nicht mehr, wie sie darauf reagieren sollen. Sie haben auch mittlerweile schon die, das Militär dort zugehört. Das ist aber auch nicht. Ich will wissen, was mit Marazan passiert. 
Okay, so I'm gonna meet him at home after school. Take a look, watch it on your own. Kids are being killed. You have to Nearly a thousand children have been murdered in the last five See years. It. And like this. And that's it for today. So um, see you next time. See you on Wednesday. And have a nice day.